men's steeple, obviously rocked by the news of Jager withdrawing. But we also have Stanley Cabini scratching. So not a lot of directions to go in here. Hillary Bohr, top seed time, 8.09. He's a favorite, I think. Then you got Updike, Furlick, Keeter, McGordy are the only ones that are on sub-821. Then you have Mahalski and Ubsali, 821, 822. I think McGordy's going to make the team. I think he has enough talent to do it. Uh, I obviously think Bohr is going to make the team. And then I think it's going to come down to Updike, Furlick, and Keeter for the last spot. And I'll go with Mason Furlick just because, man, that 1,500 PB is mighty impressive of his. What do you think uh, Andy Bear's thoughts are on this field that he forgoed, that he chose not to participate in? He, met, he, he he decided to retire. Is like, it's not worth it if I don't make the Olympics, all the training it would take. And then seeing yeah. no Jager and no Kabeni and kind of like yeah. – a new crop of I mean, guys. It's, the, it's like Bayer clearly would have been on this team if he trained and was healthy and was 80% yeah. of what his 2019 was. Yeah, nothing's guaranteed, but you, you'd feel pretty pretty good about him just based on the history. But it's still – I mean, Bohr is still really good, right? McGordy has this yeah, huge wanna, ceiling. Yeah. As, so then – I mean, it would not have been a guarantee that Bayer made the team. Uh, True. It wouldn't have been a guarantee if Cabini made the team. The only the only one I would really would have felt good about is Jager, just because his his past performances. Do you have a different top three than I do? No, I'm going with Bohr one as well because he won that Diamond League. Even though Bohr got smoked in that home race to Updike and Furlick, I think Bohr maybe had a weird race because he proved that by beating an international field. Um, there are some interesting athletes I kind of want to think about, like Don Cabral. He's this is. He made his first Olympics in what, 2008? Was it? It's crazy so how long he's been. Or eight or 12? It was 12. About 2012. About as 12. Yeah, that was 12. Yeah, 12. Let me look. That's a long time ago. It's 11 years. Cabral's still, still chasing that dream. I mean, he already achieved the dream, but he's still at it. It's impressive. I have him making the final. Um, I, don't, I don't see. Yeah, I think it's Bohr, McGordy. And then, yeah, what you said, Furlick. He's run a really quick 1500. Yeah. That is going to be very important. Speed, speed, speed in this 3K steeple. So, yeah, I'm going with Bohr, McGordy, and Furlick as my top three. Same as you. Okay. Right. Uh, women's steeple. Women's steeple. Harder to predict than anticipated coming into the season because Quigley hasn't been steepling much or at all this year. So, uh, Ferex Coburn are solid. Frax has run a couple times. Cobra ran the 908. And then I I mean if if Quigley can run 920s, I think she's fine. If she doesn't, then you got a a big group of women there that it would include uh Constian, Lawrence, Fallon, Howard, Ostrander, Wayman, Norris, Rainsberger, uh Alexina Wilson are all sub 933. So they're all between 933 and 925. Yeah, so quickly, she's only run one race in 2021, and yeah. I think it was in February, and she ran a 3K, and it was a, a respectable 3K. She ran well. What are we going to get from her? Is this going to be, like, is she, is this like a a fake out oh, no. where she's not truly a top three, and she's going to show up and get an Instagram photo and be like, check out Lululemon. Hey, have a good time. Or is she like, in the 920 range and it's like a legitimate hey i'm making the team that's what sucks about this it's so hard to pick because if you know that she's good then it's then it's her but if it's not then you got to think this is like the one event where you should be allowed to have two picks you should be allowed to have your coburn <laughs> frerichs quigley pick and then your coburn yeah, frerichs non quigley pick so the collegians are really deep this year right we watched that race with uh, Mahela Norris getting the win, and Wayman was there, and Rainsberger was there. Uh, but no one person emerged as like, oh, I'm like a low 920, high 9 yeah. teens person. They all were in the 930s again. So that, I think, gives a little bit more wiggle room to Quigley. And someone like Constian or Lawrence or Fallon, 
I think are or Marissa Howard are, are, are ahead in that group. So I'm going to say there's just going to be enough room there for Quigley to where she can run off of her PB by a decent amount and still make this team. So I'm going to go back to the the chalk of all chalks pick and go Coburn, Frericks, and Quigley. I'm going to take it. I'm going to I'm going to shoot for a hail mary. I'm just doing it. You got to zig when you're zagging once in a while. Try to get one up on you on this prediction game. I'm just going to make the bet that Quigley isn't 100%. And I'm going to then, therefore, go with my wild card. And, I'm, and I think Wayman just had a bad race. I think she's better than what she did at the NCAA championships. I think Wayman is going to put together. And I'll, I'm going to pick Wayman for the third spot. I'm going, I'm going wild. Let's do it. 